My name is Jackson Williams. I'm a classical guitarist based out of Los Angeles. Originally, I'm from Oregon, and I've lived kind of all over the place in the Western US. I've also lived in Spain, where I studied on Fulbright, learning Spanish repertoire. I studied flamenco over there as well. I did my doctorate, finished it here at USC in Los Angeles, where I studied with Bill Kanigeiser and Adam Del Monte, studying flamenco as well. And I currently play all over as a soloist and also in a duo with a guitar and clarinet. When I was five years old, my mother started me on piano, and that's because she was a piano teacher. Um, but as you can probably imagine, piano did not work out so well when you're studying with your own mother. It was always like, hey, let's do a lesson. And I'd be like, I don't want to do a lesson. Hey, let's do a lesson. No. Or you need to play it that way. I don't want to play it that way. It's like we were just constantly at each other's throats. So she said, okay, let's get you with a different instrument. I know somebody who's a great teacher. She teaches Suzuki Method classical guitar. And the rest was history. I started with her. I really enjoyed it. There was a full studio, a lot of other guitarists to play with, and it was super fun and pretty much have never looked back since. Yeah, I think I had a, a revelatory moment with guitar for me. So I remember my first year studying in college at the undergrad, I was still not 100% sure, do I wanna, I think a lot of, this happens to a lot of youth these days too. We go, do I wanna double major? Do I wanna get into a medical field? Do I wanna make money for a living or play music? Mutually exclusive, I don't know. Um, but I remember my second year of my undergrad, this is gonna sound almost like a cheesy story, but it is what happened. I was like super tired one day, had some headphones in, and I was listening to, I think, I believe it was a David Russell album of him playing Barrios. And I woke up in the middle of La Catedral. And it was just like this awesome moment for me. I, was, I had never heard the piece before. And it was like, it just blew my mind. I really was just loving the harmonies, the, everything, the, the speed, the pacing of it. And I was like, wow, I just wanna make music like this for the rest of my life, this is it. And I don't think I've ever really doubted my decision to pursue it since then. So life for a professional classical guitarist is always a dynamic one. I would imagine we all have slightly different careers, but it's, what's interesting is it's a little bit of everything. And obviously COVID has changed that a little bit, but prior to COVID, uh, I sort of had a, a day job, which is working with a nonprofit. And that nonprofit's in LA, we set up classical guitar programs in underfunded public schools. And uh, I work with not only getting the schools going, but sort of teaching the teachers how to teach guitar in the school system, which is really nice. And then of course, I always have private students that I teach. And then I spend time performing with duo and solo, oftentimes kind of leaving on a Thursday, coming back on a Sunday to get back to the day job. And um, I'm also been, thanks to COVID, doing a lot of uh, more like video tutorial kind of work to supplant some of the live teaching work. So that's been interesting as well. I think it's important to learn about lesser known Spanish composers as well as some of the lesser known pieces by the well-known composers. Because at the end of the day, we have our standard repertoire and we tend to focus on a few things. And that likely came from the days when we had some really seminal albums that came out that people listened to and those pieces became played and played and played. And they're great pieces. We always will want those pieces. But if you really look, there are plenty of other Spanish composers, both of eras past, and there's a ton of current contemporary Spanish composers who are creating great music. So if you're someone like me who loves that Spanish repertoire, that Spanish sound, there's a lot of resources out there. And I feel like it's really a question of why would you limit yourself to just those classics when there's so much more out there? Especially when you consider the context of, from a learning standpoint, using it as a launch pad to get you to even more advanced repertoire. If you want to learn flamenco, or at least learn more about flamenco as a classical guitarist, there's a lot of approaches you can do. But I think one of the more important things would be developing your ear first and foremost. We have some shared techniques and that can get you pretty far. But what I find is we get bogged down in definitions and what is what and even just hearing it. And probably the most helpful thing for me in my journey of learning flamenco has been listening, listening, listening and having things explained to me even more than the playing and the technique, which is important. One of the ways you could do that is by first sort of doing some research. There's a great website I recommend by a great uh, Flamencologo, which is like a flamencologist. It's a fairly new discipline, and that's called Flamencopolis. A lot of flamenco-related words, new words here today. So flamencopolis.com has, it's unfortunately only in Spanish, so maybe that's not so helpful, but with Google Translate, you can get the idea of what things, where things came from historically. You can get an idea of what are the different palos of flamenco, and there's also sound bites that you can listen to to kind of get the idea of where it came from. The other big trick, I think, is when you listen to flamenco, and you can find it on any resource you want, YouTube, uh, any sort of streaming platforms, you can find these things, but you need to search by the palo instead of by the artist. So it might be a first 
thought for anybody to look up Paco de Lucia. And that's a great idea because he's the king. But you may not get a good sampling of a specific palo of flamenco and learn about it. So I would recommend instead, try looking up bulerias, alegrias, solea, and listen for the commonalities. Then just do a little bit of study on what are those characteristics exactly. Start to hear those. And then you can start studying and learning how to play. But I think listening first and then being able to identify and understand goes so much farther than being able to try to jump in by playing. Because the honest truth is a classical guitarist, while we do have the techniques and similar techniques to be able to play flamenco, we most likely have zero understanding of what flamenco actually is. And we need to kind of make up in that regard first. So I, was act I actually started teaching online even before COVID, um, just because I had been kind of listed online and people were finding me. And so I was starting to develop a little bit of a system for teaching online. And my goal was really to take out all the inefficiencies of in-person teaching and maximize the efficiencies of online teaching as much as possible. There are some things you can't recreate, like you really can't play in time with your student, right? But I found that there are a lot of things you can do that make it a little bit better in some ways. For example, I could create a play along for them, send it to them, and then they have somebody to play with not only on lesson day, but throughout the rest of the week. Uh, another thing they could do is we could use video messaging apps to talk during the week between lessons and they can get more follow-up so they're not kind of led wrong. What I found in the end is, yes, it took a little more investment of time on my part to adjust to online lessons, but the online learning experience can be pretty close to what it could be in person. And especially for people who don't have access to really high quality instructors in person, it's an awesome way to get plugged in directly to somebody who's like super qualified. My two pieces of advice for somebody who's trying to get out of that rut, whether it's beginner rut, moving to intermediate, intermediate rut, moving to advanced, would be first of all, look at how far you've come already. So look at some of the initial pieces you're having trouble with. And if you've only been studying for a few months, you might need a little more patience to be looking at that, but just keep pushing through. And to that end, keep it more like just a daily habit. Like you're just working on something. You can't expect to just wake up one day and have a silver bullet that's gonna figure everything out. It's really more of a habitual daily kind of practice sort of thing. And along with that, the other thing I see is just take things slow. It, you're gonna be getting advice from teachers in one way or another, that is to practice things slow or practice things in this way. Take that advice, follow it and do it. Because I see that, especially if we're adults, we kind of think we have life figured out already. We start something new and we go, ah, I'm not gonna do that, this is my system. And that system usually involves, oh, let me take the piece, practice it from beginning to end five times and then I'm good. But that's not the best method necessarily. And you know, here you'll be getting advice from all sorts of things of ways to practice that if you put it into practice, you're gonna learn faster. So some of it is maximizing the efficiency of your learning, staying measured, and some of it is just being patient with yourself.